from bumi funding to surging startup growth india semiconductor industry is charging full speed ahead last year we saw several fresh semiconductor startup born and substantial funds raised by the country's semiconductor startups while researching this on link for the link for this linkedin live here are a few headlines that caught my eye the indian semiconductor industry is projected to achieve market value of 55 billion by 2026 and driven primarily by the demand for semiconductors in the smartphone and wearables automotive parts and computers and data storage together these makes up over 60% of the market the design link scheme dli scheme for the semiconductor sponsored by the government has received the warm response with the government receiving over 28 proposals from companies including startups an expert panel has recommended the ministry of electronics and uh, information technology meti to establish a semiconductor research centers at an initial outlay of 8 billion dollars around 66000 crore over the next 5 years we'll talk more about government initiatives later in this event and carrying on with this investment secure capital now peak 15 on friday said that it has invested 3 million in inco semiconductors marking its second infusion in a semiconductor startup in india these headline among others fuel the optimism that surround the ecosystem yet the journey from a new and novel chip design to mass production brings no shortage of obstacles how do you turn an inspired idea scribbled on a whiteboard into commercial silicon what manufacturing partnerships must early stage start startups strive to navigate from lab to fab today we are we will look in to decode the strategic playbook for indian semiconductor startups i am govin kedia and i run arctic invent which helps companies increase their enterprise value by way of building business centric ipr portfolio my company arctic invent has worked with 1000 plus startups from europe us and india helping them build massive value on their product and technologies it has been more than one year we have been running this and you know it has been truly inspirational to running this linkedin lives and welcome back those who are returning again or who are joining for the first time welcome to this startup series where we help and we aim to help deep tech in india to go to the next level as we kick off our fifth season looking to take a deep dive into some of the deep tech startup ecosystem as we begin with the one thing that probably fuels the most deep tech innovation or rather aids it semiconductors before i bring my guest on i would like to unveil a resource arctic invent has specially put together for semiconductor ecosystem a dashboard on patent filing landscapes in the indian ecosystem of semiconductors all of you in this event get first hand access to it we'll be giving the link uh, of to the dashboard in the comments as we move on and we hope this helps all the innovators in this area to understand the landscape better and also foster the advancement they build uh, in the semiconductor innovation now getting back to the panel in hand let's uncover the uncover the road map from the concept to customer to steer processing promising chip design from incubation to mainstream mainstream adoption uh there seems to be some problem with my linkedin live on my page so allow me one minute to just also fix it uh while we start this and uh, then we'll get it going just give me one minute to fix it um okay i hope that it will work this time just uh just a second okay just give me a minute to fix it uh i request my team to just give me a pause or take me off the screen for a minute and then
uh okay all right we'll get back and if if there is a problem we'll fix it later i think uh, we'll you can stream it later then uh now this in this uh, late hour departure from our usual time this is to enable our guest to join from us uh, he brings a wealth of knowledge and experience from semiconductor ecosystem and i particularly wanted him to be here today please uh, welcome to the startup series uh, dr v mr vijay parmar uh, vijay is a luminary in semiconductor world he's a iit bombay alumnus uh, have made significant strides in the semiconductor and iot his major roles included uh, leading amd growth in asia pacific uh, guiding vextel to a successful 550 million deal with intel and transforming startup naimi into thriving business as a president and ceo of gainspan corporation he turned innovative ideas into successful product now as a partner at founders partner uh, vijay uses his rich experience to help new startups grow his hands on experience in taking semiconductor projects from early stage to full scale production makes him perfect speaker for the today's panel on navigating the semiconductor industry in india it is my privilege to host him today and thank you vijay for doing it so early in the morning uh, good morning to you and welcome to the startup series uh, please add if i miss anything while introducing you i really look forward to our conversation No, that's good, Govind. Thank you very much. Thank you, audience, for being here. Uh, I know it's late for you in India, and thank you for accommodating accommodating my time zone. And look forward to a lively discussion on semiconductor industry in India and startups. Great, thank you. And our second guest has been uh, lighting up semiconductor industry with his startup. Please welcome uh, Dr. Rohan. Uh, Rohan, the founder and CEO of Lightspeed Photonics, a company at the forefront of building optoelectronic processor. for the future of data centers a tech entrepreneur with deep roots with both in physics and electronics rohit's journey is a blend of academic excellence and practical innovation his tenure at lightspeed uh, ai labs and his previous startup highlight his commitment to developing cutting edge technology solutions and rohit's work in alternative uh, cosmo, uh, cosmologies and his passion for help exploring multi disciplinary fields makes him a unique voice in the semiconductor industry He has been first-hand experience in steering a startup towards remarkable achievement in the deep tech semicon domain. Welcome to the startup uh, series, Rohit, and please add if I missed anything while introducing you. No, no, uh, fantastic to be here, and uh, thank you so much. This is very important, and at the right juncture, we are having this conversation, mm -hmm. and look forward to having a, a live conversation today. Great. Thank you, and thank you, audience, for bearing some of the technical troubles. Uh, people who have been on my page, I think they can shift to other on Rohan's page or our company's page where this is live again. Uh, so I think we can also uh, post this message on the LinkedIn group uh, as well. Uh, now, before we jump into this conversation, a reminder to all our audience that we'll be taking questions. So, uh, so please make uh, you know put them down in the comments. We will. also uh, circulate a whatsapp group if you want to join and also learn about the deep tech uh, events that we are keep on doing now let's start with the state of semiconductor startup ecosystem in india at what stage do you think it is where it is headed what is the future looks like let's start from you know vijay uh, from your perspective and rohin can add uh, because uh, vijay you have been looking semicon you've been part of iit mumbai initiative so what's the state can you give us a bit of sense of your perspective in terms of india as a semiconductor hub sure sure so i mean i i'll put one caveat here that i have had tremendous exposure to semiconductor industry especially startups in india in last 3 uh, or 4 months as i uh, prepared for uh, semiax which is a semiconductor initiative at iit bombay I've taken an active role in that. Uh, as I prepared for that summit that concluded last week, um, and so you know, uh, my knowledge may be <laughs> limited, but uh, it, I have learned a lot. And you know, I mean, I I do know that semiconductor startups in India started decades back, right? I mean, I know of people who did companies uh, like Arcus, uh, our media, if you. familiar with those back in uh late 90s uh and so you know there have been startups i think i have done startups where the design center uh was in india so we excel i think we grew up to about 160 people uh more than 60 of us were in bangalore so 
I think semiconductor engineering in India, and that you know, applies to not just multinationals but also startups, has been around for a long time. I mean, I was a soft engineer in India when when DI um, started uh, their very first design center in India, and I think they pioneered that idea. And I was reading somewhere uh, that 20% of the world's semiconductor engineers uh, are based in India. Uh, so I think semiconductor industry is not new to India. I would say that based on what I saw in last few months, that there has been an uptick. Um, you know, we had nine startups present uh, at our summit. I probably reached out to another 10 or 15 product startups and tens of um, services startups, but, you know, very specific focus. Uh, not just on semiconductors, but also a specific area in, in semiconductors. So, you know, it's very encouraging. I think that we had uh, about 10 VCs who, you know, invest in semiconductors and deep tech. I think we probably missed another 10 or 15. Uh, the fund sizes tend, tend to be small, uh, but I think just the fact that there are venture investors, including some larger ones from, from US with their offices in India, so, you know, I would say it's it's looking like uh, this is on its way to becoming a much larger part of the global uh, semi semiconductor industry. Great. Roy, what's your take? Uh... Well, um, uh, as an entrepreneur, optimistic as ever, I definitely see a major shift uh, of in India, you know, which is predominantly been uh, IP, VLSI services, company both front end and back end to more product based uh, startups and uh, companies coming out to address new and uh, you know unexpected markets rather i mean india typically receives about 2 billion dollar inflow for chip and ic design alone and now we are entering an era where uh, you know major companies are coming trying to set up uh, fabs here uh, in fact there was an announcement uh, that there is there's going to be some $3 billion uh, 65 nanometer analog chip fab uh, in Karnataka uh, from, uh, you know, support from Tower Semiconductor. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, growth uh, potential that is being scripted as, uh, uh, as we talk. And uh, if you look at the startup scenario, uh, you know, uh, our uh, uh, minister uh, announced, you know, we have about 21 uh, semiconductor startups today and they expect to see like about 50 by by end of this year to next year and mm -hmm. uh you know there is also uh, you know interest from the private vcs uh you know investors your nest and growx have taken in charge to invest in a, a deep tech semiconductor company like ours and others like peak xv speciale whiteboard capital they're they're all following now like they're keen to uh, observe and invest. In fact, at Semicon India, we have seen uh, a lot of investors on the panel uh, talk about it uh, beyond the uh, usual strategics. Um, mm. But if you see from the global perspective, uh, you know, uh, semiconductor startups in, in, for example, US, uh, they, they've raised about 260 million, uh, you know, in about 17 startups uh, this year. And it's seen as one of the lowest since 2019. Uh, mm. 2019, they raised about 700 million, about 60 deals. And if you look at China, uh, which we see as a as a growth uh, model for hardware, uh, I mean, they have like added about 40, 50,000 uh, ch new chip related businesses, uh, which you could call it startups or you could call it SMEs. But whichever way you look at it, these are sheer numbers that are mind boggling, right? Like, um, you know, tens of thousands of companies. Of course, we don't want these numbers alone. Like we want good quality focused startups that can cater to the world needs. And uh, we have we have a lot of that change happening uh, in India going. Sure. No, great. I, I think uh, very, very interesting uh, because I think a lot of, like Vijay said that India has been a semiconductor hub. Of course, there's a lot of uptake. You know, there has been always talent here in design, probably the fabrication and every ecosystem is getting developed. Uh, and with a with, uh, bit more investments coming in, I think that there is a lot of talk about it. And, but I, I think great point and uh, that India has always uh, talent in this domain. I think that's a great news for all of us. 
here that you know uh, if we want to take it to the next level as a as an ecosystem of semiconductors as a startup and deep tech domain i think that's a really good encouraging uh, fact in fact i i'm really surprised to hear that because i always thought that semiconductor in india has always been new but you know if there has been people 160 150 people in the past for a startup working i think that's a great news and also uh, shows an importance that there is a talent available right so i think that's a great time to start uh, you know in thinking about this area now when we see semiconductor startups innovate with new materials like gallium nitride gan and novel manufacturing techniques like 2d materials and 3d stacking uh, where do indian startups stand with respect to these innovation and others right and uh, what are the key technology breakthroughs on the horizon that could significantly impact india's semiconductor self reliance on startup ecosystem over the next 5 years especially let's say in the area of you know 5g 6g quantum iots what's your take on these things um rohin you want to go first this time oh yeah actually um, i have uh, a perspective that i don't know if you uh, fully agree so i'll i'll better start Uh, see, I mean, process development facilities in India are like still very much in nascent stage, right? Like whether you talk about you talked about uh, you know using two D materials, three D stacking, even things like quantum computing, uh, you know, or SCLs, Siri, Pilani, Gatek, they're all in dire need of upgrades, and we need to support that ecosystem. The government is putting in efforts. Uh, CDAX efforts are coming to see the light of the day now. The right push in funding our homegrown processors and uh, you know technologies can. get to a point uh, and i've also heard you know great things about uh, space application center of isro uh, you know putting in efforts for space grade packaging for capabilities uh, for ceramic substrates etc but the support for startups to to make any growth in the things like you said iot ai 6g we have always had these capabilities to build uh, software systems and embedded support for these right like for example our homegrown iot5 success story is basically they built small package low cost wifi modules so that they could build iot applications around those low cost modules and it's india's homegrown success story but this is more on the embedded side this more on the uh, you know module assembly side but semiconductor point of view there's a lot left to be uh, desired you know um, so uh, yeah there are like some push that is happening from the startup point of view like our friends at fermionic ic or silicium uh, chip spirit they're all pushing boundaries to support the local ecosystem right like uh, for example we have the industry's fastest uh, tdd beam former rfics for satcom radar applications in core uh, you've all heard of like the risk 5 processors these are uh you know new ips this were not seen before uh but this is still in the domain of design and ip development and not so much to impact the uh, fabrication and uh, you know development capabilities uh, in terms of the process development yet um i'll i'll take a pause here and i'll probably add in a few more things uh, which i uh, go ahead Yeah, no. I mean, I think that uh, first of all, this is a great question because uh, you know the kind of technology is beyond CMOS, which is <coughs> typically used for most you know digital and some uh, mixed signal ICs. Uh, things like GAN, silicon carbide, you know, uh, these are important technologies, and the products that uh, they they drive. uh rf um power electronics those are the highest value add products in semiconductor industry i mean in terms of dollar value they may not be as high as let's say processors or memories but in terms of uh, gross margins in terms of strategic value those are very important so the fact that uh companies in india are actually driving this that's fantastic uh gan i mean specifically you know about uh, agnit semiconductor and you know receiving tremendous support from indian government a very large amount of funding uh been around a long time and so it's nice to see you know ideas from isc getting commercialized um with help from the industry and and government um there's a similar initiative at iit bombay that's been going on for several years you know they are actually building some mini fabs uh, with some uh, working with some government and semi government agencies 
So, you know, I think, I think this will happen, right? I think that India will have uh, innovations in, in important and, you know, difficult technologies like GAN. Um, there is, in general, there is, you know, there's a need for infrastructure, right? So as far as I know, there may be some small GAN fabs, but, you know, there's no fab at scale in India right now. And so these companies have to uh, depend on boundaries outside. Uh, I'm pretty sure that'll change. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about this more is the need for capital, right? Mm -hmm. And today the venture industry in India, if you look at, of course, there's some large funds, there's funds, um, large growth funds uh, like SoftBank and, you know, others from Singapore and Japan and, and Asia as well as local Indian funds. And they're investing big money in software startups and, mm -hmm. and you know, both late stage and, and early stage. Uh, there isn't an ecosystem like that for, um, for semiconductors. So I think that needs to change. I think there's a number of large companies in India who can benefit from, from these and they have a lot of money, right? These are very large, you know, telecom service providers, uh, companies in manufacturing, um, you know, they're huge. And so I hope that they step in as well, besides the government, because, you know, one of the things the government will do is say, hey, I'll give you X amount of money if you, you know, bring in X amount of money from somewhere else, some private investors. And, and that's fair. But then private industry needs to step up. But I, I think there is need for some significant investments in, in, you know, I'm talking several hundred million dollars in building these specialized fab infrastructure for things like GAN and other specialty materials. And I think that'll go a long way towards having, um, as they say, business, you know, local semiconductor companies in these areas thrive and that'll help everybody. You know, it'll help uh, these companies that uh, are in the, either service provider business or equipment business. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, it, in addition to the funding uh, for GAN kind of efforts, for self-reliance, you also need the local demand. For example, mm -hmm. automobile is a huge market. One of our mentors was talking about, unless you have the homegrown demand consuming these products, the investment will not make full sense, right? So mm -hmm. you can get the full return on that investment if you are able to plug in this uh, outcome into the local uh, catering to the local ecosystem, whether it is the EV industry that is uh, going to hugely come up in India or uh, any other uh, industry sectors uh, within IoT, AI uh, related, the data center related growth, all that only when it is supported, uh, can these fabs uh, investments can be justified. And I think that goes hand in hand uh, mm -hmm. with the investments. Yeah. Sure. No, I, I think very, very, you know, interesting insight. And, uh, you know, while you stress on the fact of, you know, uh, but I think we are really hopeful with all these, you know, a lot of conversations around and government is talking about these investments. I hope, uh, like Vijay said, that it needs a bit of commitment in terms of capital, in terms of, you know, infrastructure in that way. And, and Rohit, coupled with your domestic demand, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, in terms of ecosystem, you know, many of the promising, you know, semiconductor startups because of the technical complexities typically originate from, you know, institutions like IITs and IITs or, you know, some very uh, 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 tier one kind of colleges to be fair, right? However, some academic research in India often struggle to translate to commercialized product or, you know, scaling as a startup, right? Because of the ecosystem and these things. So what, what role should Indian academic institutions, especially you know, as a collaborative uh, to nourish this entire ecosystem. I'm sure, you know, Rohin, you are also facing these troubles when hiring a lot of people. Uh, not all the time you will find, you know, uh, talent from, you know, smaller colleges to be, you know, uh, not to say the smaller beans uh, in terms of anything else. But how to force this triter linkages and align the semiconductor research with the market needs? Because while we are talking about the market, uh, you are running a company in semiconductor. How? What's your view, especially how to really do this in terms of you know building this entire ecosystem of academia as well? I mean, see, um, often academia and academic research is like 
far removed from the industry research like and india is no exception there uh, you see most of the academia's goal uh, at best is to publish the research and maybe provoke interesting ideas and thoughts you know industrial research can pick up from um and uh, you're right about you know having the ingrown uh, homegrown talent we had to train our own uh, people also uh, in fact our cto ramana emulated the uh, you know singapore model ime model of engaging faculty and students to deliver industry projects so before lightspeed we had to build a team on similar lines right and mm -hmm. uh, we are also seeing um, like you said uh, from iits the like professor kamakoti uh, what this kind of ecosystem that he has put uh, at iit madras is nothing less in comparison to what we have at uc berkeley and uh, you know you uh, also probably familiar with professor rao tumla's efforts on how he has kind of uh, generated uh, uh, you know industry uh, academia linkage at georgia tech uh, he's bringing that uh, making some uh, you know groundwork to bring 12 different research areas associating with 12 iits but to help uh you know sort of tier 2 tier 3 uh, uh engineering colleges and talent there are also some efforts to make open source uh, you know tools like the go to the workshops and people aware of these uh, risk get an exposure to some level and i think it won't happen over it will all take time to build for the future next 5, 5 to 10 years uh, startups it will become a strong workforce then and all this training will uh, add substantial value to the indian ecosystem there sure so vijay i have a different question for you you know you've been you have been in us and you have seen all these uh, you have also studied there i believe uh, so are there any models that, that have worked globally that indian academia can emulate as a overall you know strategy whether it's a program for talent development pipelines or ip commercialization framework and support what's your view you know in terms of what model will work for us as a academia in this uh, semiconductor domain yeah i mean i would say that the, you know i mean i'm sure a lot of people in the audience are familiar with uh, spin outs from uh, academic institutions like uc berkeley like mit like caltech like stanford Uh, and Cornell, and you know the list goes on. And similarly in in Europe. So, and I I I think this is happening in India as well. Mm -hmm. It's also very common uh, for these uh, colleges and universities in in US and other parts of Western world to have incubators. And so, you know, with funding, with resources, and that's happening. in uh, in india as well so i mean you know i apologize if i <laughs> miss some important names but you know i mean you have you have uh, places like um, it hyderabad has a fabulous uh, incubator uh, we at semiax are about to launch i mean we've had an incubator called sign at it bombay for last right. for 20 years and we are now kind of launching a semiconductor uh, extension to that so i don't, i don't think you know i don't think that's you know of course the scale is much smaller in india today mm. but there is some really good work going on at acad academic institutions i would also say that increasingly this work is more and more aligned with the industry right i mean if you look at in us ideas um come from i mean you know like if you look at machine learning deep machine learning the research work for that was done in like 80s and and 90s mm -hmm. and probably some in 70s and so you know people come you know they start using these algorithms that were decades old the only reason mm -hmm. why the world couldn't really benefit from them was because we didn't have compute power so so you know i think indian institutions also need to make sure that there is sort of the long term extremely long term research work being done that benefits the industry in general but there is also need for you know developing a uh, work uh, products as well as technologies that benefit the industry now and i mean we had at summit uh, at the semi x summit we had five ideas from iit bombay for mm -hmm. companies presented as as mm -hmm. part of, uh, one of our sessions I know that IIS is quite active. IIT Madras is active. IIT Hyderabad is active. 
I mean, I look at any university and I see some sort of an incubator. So, you know, I mean, I think, I think the scale is smaller. Um, you know, I would say, and this, uh, this I'm sure I will, I will repeat is to me, what's lacking is go to market. Mm. You cannot mm. build, I mean, in this day and age, you can't, I mean, maybe there's some very specific ideas, but by and large, you cannot build uh, any company whether semi or otherwise, uh, without having a global market in sight. And, and to be able to market and sell your products worldwide, I mean, there's two things. One is you need to be competitive. I mean, you can't say, well, people in India will buy my product because I'm an Indian company. That, that may happen. Um, I think most people, even in India, are capitalist and, you know, they'll work for the, their organization and second is i mean you really need to have people i mean there's so much focus right now on developing engineering talent and you know i think there needs to be a focus on developing go-to-market talent it doesn't need to be in same numbers but you mm -hmm. need people who understand the worldwide markets who know how to market these products, who know what the design cycles are for a semiconductor product. Uh, I feel like the SaaS industry has done that. I mean, you know, obviously companies like Zoho and Freshworks have a lot to do with that, but, you know, I meet founders who really, really understand how to sell the products in, in US and, and other parts of the world. Semiconductors, you know, I think, I think we are far from it. I mean, I apologize to, to all my no, I think, uh, it's a very very good insight uh, yeah. Yeah, i think uh, one takeaway for audience is to also have a go to market when they are firstly thinking about a semicon so i think it's a very very valid uh, you know observation and i think it will greatly help us all who are listening in and who are uh, you know in the deep tech uh, domain a uh, very interesting question from jeevan i think i'll take a break and i want to pick this question because somehow it's connected is that uh, will a semicon focus accelerator that can aggregate resource and network help? Um, what has been your experience? Uh, so particularly, Rohin, it's for you. So uh, yeah. you pick, pick it up. No, no. See, uh, certainly it helps, right? Like and there's a lot of constant endeavors by IESM members like Dr. Satya Gupta and uh, industry veterans like Muthu Sir. Uh, Safal, the semiconductor fabulous accelerator in uh, Bangalore, they've all tried to put together efforts where they could make EDA tools available. And uh, now, you know, the C C2AS DLI schemes are also doing that, right? Like even Telangana Valley Photonics, IIT Hyderabad, they've all given the ecosystem these uh, tools and access. But as Vijay rightly pointed out, what startups need beyond the tools is the market access. So unless we are building it for a specific purpose and we have that global uh, market outreach and the connections that are made to ensure whatever is being designed and produced if an incubator and accelerator can you know fill in that gap beyond what is already provided now and and these are these all took some time and efforts to you know put together all the ecosystem uh, players from the eda tool vendors point of view and the ip uh, providers point of view even uh, fab uh, fab facilities uh, point of view but now the last piece of the puzzle that is missing is the market access so mm -hmm. if an accelerator can put together something like that that will make a huge difference sure i i, I think uh, you know one question that you know, what i wanted to also connect you with uh, there have been a lot of incentives government is you know announcing a lot of schemes now in your experience while running Lightspeed, uh, what further interventions that and public support you see that Indian semiconductor startups, of course, market access is, of course, uh, government may not be able to help there. But in terms of government commercialization arms like CMP, or you know, uh, there has been some export incentives as well. Are they really useful? Are they really working? Uh, you know, uh, would want it to understand, you know, what's the practical insights there, which you have been, you know, addressing semicon startups, you know, across uh, different colleges and with semicon uh, accelerator and incubator is what are the things which are working at the government scheme, which is not working, which is just on the paper and what needs to be fast tracked? That is the question here. 
Um, should I go first? Yes, please. Yes, please. Please. So, I mean, I, 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 I think whatever government is doing is working, right? I mean, you, you, you make capital available to people. That's a good thing, right? And I think you know, from what I understand, is there is a little bit of chicken and egg situation with DLI. which is you know they need private sector funding to match and so you know private sector needs to step up and <laughs> but you know they kind of say well are you going to get government funding so you know but i think i think that's a log jam that can be can be addressed but i think that's a good thing i think the chip to startup is a good thing uh, dli is a good thing i'm very impressed that this is happening um i i think that um, and you know just to to me a semi oriented accelerator can absolutely work uh, it needs to have a kind of the the pipeline for the next stage of funding right mm. i mean you know an accelerator can at best do few hundred thousand dollars to maybe a million dollars right so there needs to be a pipeline to next stage 5 million next stage 20 30 million next stage maybe 50 million 100 million depending on what the company is doing so i think i think there's a need for that there's a need for local infrastructure and like i said you know there's a need tremendous need for these startups to you know grounds up i mean you got to look at whether what i'm doing has commercial relevance right commercial mm-hmm. viability and not just because i like this idea so let me go <laughs> build it <laughs> um But yeah, I think I think that I mean to me the government stuff is working really well. I mean, you know, there's always room for improvement. You know, I'm sure there's bureaucracy. I think I'm sure there's a need for them to be fair and reasonable and and to everyone, and that adds uh, a process. Uh, and you can't help that. But I'm mm-hmm. in general very happy with what Indian government is doing. Yeah, I, 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 yes, yes, I agree with uh, Vijay on. Uh, most of the accounts and i also have a little perspective from grassroot uh, ground yeah. reality point of view uh, there is see uh, one is government uh, providing these uh, you know incentives to make make the tape outs uh, little more accessible uh, even somewhat training and connected to the universities of course they should not be limited to chalk and talks right like they should become hands on sessions that should be sponsored mm-hmm. by the private organizations universities that's when you start seeing more engagement right from the students level where this uh, c2s starts and to the dli schemes where the uh, talent pool becomes bigger uh, but in terms of the sort of uh, you know policies uh, you know some of the uh, things can be made mandatory let us say if an mnc is trying to put together a semiconductor facility in india Uh, they should have some earmarked uh, almost like csr right earmarked mm-hmm. some certain percentage budget to selflessly give it to back to the startups and it could be you know helping in testing it could be helping in uh, tape out or it could be helping in packaging any of these facilities if they they make it compulsory i think it will have far more impact in in grown startups than uh, you know any incentives related to exports because the exports and the incentive it becomes a natural outcome once you mm-hmm. reach that stage right mm-hmm. and most of the major companies only can benefit from it initially uh, whether it is pli uh, kind of schemes or uh, the companies that are putting together now which were traditionally pcb companies now they are moving more towards packaging and uh, mm-hmm. you know some can even start putting together smaller fabs in some different materials but at the end of the day beyond government private funding needs to propel the growth but government policy should be such that it pressures pressurizes the private uh, like let's say a local automotive growth is required mahindra startups they can propel the growth of supporting the startups for you know automotive uh, related ship de- uh, development and they can you know for nothing uh, no expectations in short return short time returns they can give back like like the csr kind of things like or mm-hmm. if you want to improve the data center infrastructure or uh, telecom infrastructure airtel reliance adani groups vedantas all the they can push for the growth of compute chips uh, you know again all this can be influenced by the government and they don't have to put in a single penny 
There's one more thing that can be done. In, for example, in Singapore, there is a talent hiring program for startups. Almost 70% is supported by the government and only 30% is needed to be paid by the SME or a startup. So this basically helps startups retain good talent so that you know they don't run away for a market pay elsewhere. This, uh, there's always a lure of a big company, right? Sure. So these are these are like relatively smaller budget things. These are relatively something that can be implemented at grassroots levels that can have major impact, uh, you know, uh, in, in the startup uh, growth. Great. No, thanks. Thanks, Ryan. It really adds a lot of value uh, in terms of practical. I'm sure uh, if this goes, uh, people looking at it, I'm sure they will consider. I think CSR funding and the way to, uh, you know, um, there has been debates around how corporate CSR fund can be and cannot be used. And of course, there are a lot of debates. And no, know, I'm not talking about CSR per se. It can be something like CSR if a semiconductor yeah, yeah. company needs to put in some percentage to support semiconductor startups in right. India. Right. It's right. not right. like CSR. It's not. No, I'm, sure. I'm just saying that this conversation has already been there around once the government has announced this CSR as a mandatory, you know, profit sharing in that way. So I, I do believe that, you know, we hope that this also opens up a, lit, a little bit more for startups and this areas as well. So let's hope that. Now, one pertinent question uh, many founders and aspiring founders will have is the secret of getting right investors in this domain, because this technology takes time to mature. It takes a lot of validation. I'm sure you're going through cycles and cycles. Um, so what, you know, how to deal with this? Because I, I think uh, Vijay also pointed that India ecosystem still it's opening up, but not so large check sizes. This investments in semicon is always larger check size. So how do you deal? How what has been your journey? Share some secrets, and Vijay, please jump in and also help understand how to really uh, you know navigate this situation of funding. It's like a chicken and egg sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, some learnings that would be great to learn. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, in 2014, I, I sold my last startup. It was not a pure chip startup. It was a hardware startup. But semiconductor industry at the time, I mean, if you remember, was sort of at the lowest level, right? In about 10, 12 years back, there was no funding uh, for semi startups. And, uh, you know, I said, I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> so I joined a venture fund. Um, and that was probably a mistake because semiconductor industry the last seven, eight years has gone through like the biggest growth ever. So, you know, I mean, I think, I think that obviously the funding is a function of the, the broader cycle, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're probably in the low cycle right now. It's hard to get funding for anything, but especially for uh, industry that has long time to gestation, right? long time to exit. Um, but, you know, there's always money, right? And I would say, you know, I mean, like I said, you, you, need, you need money that's patient, right? So you need money that's smart. You need money that understands what you're doing. And you need money that's patient. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I mean, one of the things that maybe we as, as a group together, meaning industry and, and government and startups, um, is to attract more outside India capital into semiconductors. Right? I mean, as it is, the local venture capital is just not enough. And rather than companies having to you know, come to Silicon Valley or go up to other parts of the world to raise the Series B, Series C rounds. Why not bring those guys to India? Incentivize them to say, hey, if you come in and invest in these companies, we'll help you. We'll, we'll give you something, right? And whatever it is, tax benefit or some other incentive. Um, because I think, and there are funds that invest in in deep tech and in semiconductors i think the second thing i would say is you know i mean one of the things in us is sort of brand name right people have brand name um i mean you know there was a company i won't name names but you know they one of the one of the ai chip and system startups that you know 
didn't do too well because Nvidia kind of ate everybody's lunch. Uh, but they they raised fifty million dollars in Series mm -hmm. A with nothing, and funds that didn't invest in chips invested in that company just because this gentleman had a very strong brand name. And I think we need people like that in India to kind of mm -hmm. you know do startups. You know, I mean, I think right now we have a handful of, you know, handful of maybe, you know, 100 handfuls of people. <laughs> but I think there's need for some really good, strong brand name people to step in because those guys will attract good capital. They'll attract brand name capital. And I think that'll go a long way towards building the ecosystem much faster than what we have today. Sure. Absolutely. Great, great uh, Rohit, what's your take? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, see, in Silicon Valley, uh, actually, there, there has been a precedence of uh, entrepreneurs, first generation entrepreneurs putting together semiconductor chip companies. And uh, later, when they became VCs, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, how he joined a VC firm, or when they started, uh, when they saw the success, they were able to put in, the, encourage the next generation whether it is at a due diligence level or at the you know indirect investment level we are seeing that same thing in india in saas for example we have seen the uh, you know success of the previous generation e-commerce companies them mm -hmm. putting together you know uh, funds to support the next generation entrepreneurs to do saas startups you know whether it is in uh, uh, all web 3.0 or uh, meta or any of these new technologies a similar thing, we did not have a background in India for semiconductors. So luckily mm -hmm. for the few of us who have got the funding uh, was also influenced and um, sort of supported by these semicon veterans who have been constantly working in the field, who have been vocal about, uh, you know, helping the local hardware ecosystem, uh, you know, despite knowing that it is uh, capital intensive and also it's patient money, right? You have to uh, be patient to, to get to the success point. But there are such advocates, uh, luckily for us in India, and that has started shifting the needle a little bit. But then still, we don't have that kind of an ecosystem where beyond influencing, they can put uh, their own mm. money. And Vijay mm. is absolutely right in, you know, if, if a big brand name a person comes in, whether it is an expat or it is somebody within Indian ecosystem, but from a, a different field, it, it makes a lot of difference in the funding scenario in country. And uh, I think uh, government will be able to match those f uh, fundings if, uh, uh, if private investors take more and more interest there. Sure. No, absolutely. I, I think uh, key word here is to be looking for patient capital. And also, I think people who have been in this area for uh, long enough or have seen uh, this industry, I think they are the right person to reach out to raise rounds or have a discussion on the funding side. I think that has been, uh, I think, a very, a very crisp takeaway in this conversation. So thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Rohin, for sharing that. Now, coming back to one thing which is closer to what I do and, you know, IP itself. So, uh, you know, of course, Lightspeed has been building very great IPs. Uh, and, you know, as a, you know, IP person myself, I deeply understand the centricity of watertight IP defenses, especially Semicon has been litigious space overall. I mean, if you look at the trend. Uh, now, to dive into the issue of pivotal, not just safeguarding, but monetizing the innovation and ensuring return on the R&D investments. For Indian startup operating on tight budgets, smaller check size, now they have to defend their IP globally can prove really difficult at times, right? So what are the some of the unique intellectual property challenges that you faced, you know, Rohin, uh, while you were working or you believe that have been, you know, been faced by the industry, Vijay, uh, that you feel that uh, what needs to be done further to be, you know, doing in this area of IP protection, to transform the great ideas into really like an asset which can further license or monetize. I think ARM and Qualcomm have been great examples of, you know, semiconductor as a whole. Uh, so, you know, some perspective on IP, uh, you know, would be great, uh, you know, from you and Vijay uh, on, on this. And of course, I'll join if I if I can contribute on that. Uh, I think I'll, I'll go first, uh, Vijay, if you are. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the idea of semiconductor ip is it's very complex and it needs special attention right like uh, it's important to begin with the solid prior art search and then you identify the unique inventive novel steps on what what the innovation is 
and it requires an expert with the understanding of the subject and they also have to have that willingness to learn the new topics because it's just a constantly changing uh, you know field and in india unfortunately i think the awareness is on much lower side uh, of course all the major semiconductor companies know how to sort of put together their own patent portfolio to support their indian uh, you, you know products but uh, as far as startups grow, uh, go and the i think i'm not very familiar with the uh, semiconductor patent ecosystem i think it was only introduced this in, in, in 2000s or something and that overall awareness is not generally with the the legacy uh, sort of ip consulting firms i think they are more familiar with copyrights and general patents that cover like design and functionality and such so uh, there are some semiconductor methods like that uh, could be processed as uh, you know filed as process patents for example so all this awareness and sort of working closely with the ip uh, you know and uh, thanks for support on that front um, is something that is very important and crucial and uh, uh on the other front thing that you mentioned uh, about ip valuation protection and uh, a rule of thumb of how you can monetize that and uh, what is the global standard where do we stand all that i think is an information uh, important information that we all need uh, at some point uh, go in the, to to better uh, sort of create a strong ip portfolio uh, to be globally competitive great no, thanks thanks when i think uh, puts a lot of work on me also i'll definitely look into it and that's why we have uh, created this uh, you know uh, dashboard will be sharing afterwards but vijay your take your experience you have built many startups you worked with large corporates what has been your experience on the ip side of it yeah i mean i think look you know patents uh, as a startup um, increase your value for an acquirer uh, which is mostly an exit path for you so you should always look at filing patents even though it's going to take some of your precious money to uh, to do that i'm sure govind will give you a discount <laughs> uh, but you have to do that i think the other thing i also notice uh, that people in india will say oh, i have so many patents but they've only done filings in india they haven't done uh, us so they haven't done you know a, a pct that gives them options around the world um you know that needs to change right i mean you you really have to make time i mean biggest challenge i had as a startup ceo or even when i was running sales and marketing is to get engineering guys to spend time on writing the patent it's like yeah. you know write the disclosure right i i'll find i'll find someone to help you write the rest of it but even to get that is hard and and you know you got to make time um because this is an important part of your value that you're building you're building your product as a value you generating revenue and you know that is a value you're acquiring customers as a value and you have to build a patent portfolio as a value that's what a buyer whether it's a public market or a private company will will value so i think it's it's very important that people do that i think and also you got to file patents in us mm -hmm. this is this is the 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 largest single market for electronics as many people as we have in india we still don't buy as much as us buys so you have to come here uh, and in even now i mean a lot of the products are being conceived and designed here even if they're made in china or taiwan or thailand or you know hopefully more in india over time so i think that's the other thing the other thing that uh, that i would say i think the last thing i would say is i don't know if there are specific in incentives government incentives in place this is huge strategic uh thing for for indian indian government is mm -hmm. the portfolio i mean the china did this right i mean if you look at 20 years back number of patents out of china versus now uh and if you look at semiconductors it's huge huge growth i don't know where we stand i know that overall india has made a lot of progress i think we are like number 3 i'm guessing mm -hmm. that's just because of sheer number of people we have but i i really think that indian government should step up and say hey we'll help you file mm -hmm. patents in in us file file pcts file patents in in you know eu will help you right yeah yeah there has been i mean i to add to it there has been incentives but you know of course it becomes so hard to you know recover that money that you know eventually entrepreneur decide that hey let me just not go this i'll probably fund it differently of course there has been you know of course i'm not saying 
uh, government has been trying but of course there has been uh, of course either there was too less money to make it really you know feasible for anybody to work on that or it became very difficult to get that money of course uh, there have always been two sides of the coin people misusing and using it in a different manner right so i think there has been always these challenges but overall i think uh, you know there has been of course uspto has done very smart thing that they have start reducing the prices you know if you are a very small or a very micro entity they have just i think now the official fees is now close to 350 dollars for a very small company uh, who are just filing first five patents very micro entity yeah, but, filing, but filing filing costs is not the cost right it's yeah i know but crap and i i mean i've used number of patent uh, attorneys uh, well not an attorney because they usually need somebody in us to sign off yes yeah. but you know the prep work I've, i've used number of uh, firms in in india for patents it works fine and i've saved yeah. thousands of dollars yeah. by doing that absolutely absolutely yeah. I, i think that's how that's how i think india has uh, that ability that they can actually put a lot of value on ip and bring you know build a portfolio much faster much cost effective in that way right so yeah. i think uh, really really uh, hoping that that also kicks off and uh, good for uh, for the overall semicon and of course some part also good for me <laughs> i hope so now there have been questions uh, i think one question again G- from jeevan is uh, what has been your challenge in customer discovery and commercialization building out of india and selling to the west i think uh, very pertinent what vijay just said uh, so uh, so the question is what has been your challenge in customer discovery and commercialization building out of india and selling to the west so vijay your take on this would be really well i mean i have not been in india but i think customer discovery and commercialization is not easy uh, i'm a marketing guy so you know i i think sometimes go to market is underappreciated um, you know people think that if you have a great product then you know people will come right and that doesn't always happen i think the other thing is you know the the chip is is part of a larger system and customers don't just care about your chip they care about what solves their problem right what they have today so if you're selling you know a processor well you need you know the memory interface and you need chips around that and you need reference designs um and sometimes those things are are a little lost uh, i mean increasingly people are better and better at it but you know i would say if you're in india and especially if you're a technical founder get some get a partnership in us you know or japan or europe wherever your customers are spend some time and try do market research you know spend money on people who will help you with that uh, whether it's in 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 you know in equity or whether it's in dollars uh, but you really kind of have to do this early on i mean you can't say okay now i have a product and let me you know start engaging with people i think people you know i said this in the summit as well is that in general in india the founders tend to want to keep the company to themselves right i mean mm-hmm. uh, you can't do that i mean you really you need to share equity with your management team with your employees with your advisors with anybody who helps you you can you should have a structure i mean you know i i tell people mentors and advisors are dime a dozen right mm-hmm. a lot of people will say yeah i can help you and so you have to curate and you have to make sure you have the right people helping you but to me this is one area where you need to engage early and you need to partner bring in people from you know where you need to sell sure great no thanks thanks vijay i think uh, very very interesting uh, rohin any any thoughts well i mean i i agree uh, it's not just the chip that matters it's the Uh, entire system on how it solves the problem and also very often it is coupled with the software so making it uh, you know compatible with the existing software stacks uh, is always something that helps uh, makes it faster but then it's not about the product it's about having the right people in the right market 
whether it is Southeast Asia or US, which is the biggest market for electronics. Uh, we have to find a way to work with different business units and uh, have people that have the reach and the right network to enable the conversations where uh, we can effectively communicate the value proposition to the to the right uh, sort of uh, stakeholders. No. No, great. I, I think uh, we are just past one hour, but I'll take some more time because we have lost some time in the technical problems. But I think I'm going to ask uh, going to ask both of you to make a prediction. What is the next five years? Will India's global market share would be? In across the value chain in semicon in terms of IP to fabrication, what's your take on that? Rohini, you want to go first? No, 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 please go ahead. <laughs> oh well, I mean, I India's global market share across the value chain. I don't. I mean, for sure, the consumption of semiconductors in India will grow, right? I mean, I think. If I remember right, it's like um, tens of billions of dollars today. I, I can't remember if it was 60 or 70 billion, something like that. Uh, that'll grow, right? I mean, undoubtedly, Indian economy is growing. People are able to spend more money on things. So, uh, you know, the infrastructure is growing. So there's no doubt that India will consume more semiconductors. I think that that perspective, India's market share will grow. I'm more interested in, you know, the market share of Indian semiconductor companies around the world, in India and around the world. And, you know, I, I don't know what that is today. I'm guessing it's relatively small, mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping that in next few years, especially from dollar value perspective, that uh, the Indian market share is, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent of, mm -hmm. of the world, right? Not counting, you know, I usually don't count things like memories because those mm -hmm. are, and, and, you know, for that matter, uh, processes like GPUs and, and CPUs. So not counting those, um, I'd say, you know, 10, 20 percent market share. Uh, that'll be require a lot of hard work. To get there in five years. Uh, well, I mean, um, in terms of predicting, uh, you know, I'm I'm accused of using the if condition quite a lot in my conversations, right? And it's a big if condition, uh, especially if it is it needs to be uh, volume driven. Uh, of course, uh, automotive and uh, data center growth in India for the next five years to, I mean, 10, 15 years rather, is going to. Uh, sort of decide how much market growth and uh, sort of holding that we will have in, in the future. I mean, yes, you can look at the market reports and they'll probably predict, uh, you know, anywhere between 8 to 25 percent CAGR. And uh, like, uh, you know, Vijay rightly pointed out, uh, probably in five years, it'll be 50, 60 billion dollar uh, market in terms of the size. But what is more interesting is this if condition, right? That because, uh, you know, it needs to be uh, volume consumption that is driven not just by the consumption but also by creating that opportunity from uh, the IP created locally from the chips mm -hmm. developed locally so if that happens then I don't see any reason why the CAGR can't be like 15 20 percent and 50 60 billion dollars is comfortably achievable but if we miss that bus and if we are still dependent on um, or rather if the local corporates and the uh, you know, whether it is data center, telecom guys, or the um, the automotive uh, natives, if they don't support the local ecosystem and uh, create conscious uh, efforts to adopt those solutions into into the products, then uh, it, it will be difficult, uh, uh, Govind, uh, because, you know, it ends up becoming the same old uh, IP export story and the creation of or more like services uh, support story, uh, but it needs mm -hmm. to be scripted by our own, uh, uh, you know, inherent demand that is already growing. And if I know that, I need to invest in it, right? And uh, mm -hmm. that's a no brainer. As far as sure. No, thanks. Thanks for that. I I think we are almost. Uh, we have one more question. I think from Harshwardhan. Uh, so, question to Vijay, especially, uh, what can be go-to market strategy from fabulous infrastructure to full-fledged 
electronics product in the consumer electronics and industrial electronics in a startup company? Well, I mean, I think that it, it of course varies from, from product to product, right? So, I mean, if you're building a, a product that is very specific, right? Like automotive tend to be very specific. I mean, you know, you're building an automotive product. Uh, I mean, we had, uh, um, what's this company, AB, ABCRL, ABCR Labs as one of the startups, they're building a tire pressure monitoring system. Well, that's predominantly automotive. Uh, but otherwise, you really kind of need to say, okay, you know, I'm building a product. It can do lots of different things, has a lot of use cases, a lot of applications. I'm going to research the market and pick one, at most two, but really one as my what's called beachhead, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of, I'm going to, and if, and, and then, you know, but you start customer engagement early, right? I, I hear people say, well, let's, let's hire a marketing guy after, you know, we have the, the samples back and it's working. No, you got to, I mean, you can't hire the marketing guy too early, but you can't hire him too late. And you can have consultants and advisors much earlier, but make sure you understand your market, pick a beachhead and validate that. Engage with customers, tell them what you're doing. It's fine, you know, you're one year out, one and a half years out. I think if you find the right advisors, you'll, you'll open doors. Mm -hmm. And if that's not, if it's, that's not the right beachhead, then go to the next one. But make sure that when you have samples, you already have prospects, lined up people who know your product people who understand what you're doing right uh and of course you know, make sure you have good website i mean i see websites that are just so horrible and if you, if you do a pr you can't do a pr once and not do anything for another nine months i mean so you know those are all things that that i find i mean for that matter even in us i find people just not pay attention to a good go-to-market strategy from early on and having people, you know, with experience kind of help them, right? But if you're, if you're going after consumer electronics, again, you need to figure out which is, which is the application that has the best match and, you know, to some extent, build the product for your beachhead or two. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Vijay. Now we are coming to the end. So I have last two questions. Um, what have been uh, your key lessons while building Lightspeed AI and Vijay, your startup? Uh, as an aspiring founder or who are already you know, running their startups, uh, can learn from your mistakes, especially in view of building teams, funding, and commercialization. Uh, so so some, some insights on your learnings and you know, mistakes, and especially while building the startup. Roy, why don't you go first this time? <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can speak to his mistakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great way to learn, right? I mean, uh, uh, so, yeah. So, Rohin or Vijay? See, um, from, from the standpoint, like, as a, as a startup, if you, if you look at, uh, you know, trying to put together an ecosystem where uh, there has been no, no solid precedence, um it's kind of going against the tide and uh, it is hard uh, it is tough so if there is any advice uh, to myself like when when i i would go back in time and tell myself uh, is uh, try and uh, make friends with as many other entrepreneurs and uh, you know supporters mentors uh, to to help you with the journey as much as possible uh, because uh, it's it it is uh, a very lonely and upsetting journey if you make it so. So if mm -hmm. you can put together the right team of people, the like-minded people, the right co-founder, and the right uh, sort of ecosystem that is supporting you, whether it is uh, you know investors, mentors, or uh, fellow entrepreneurs, I think that is one strong, rather the strongest one. Um, and because we are in a point in history where the future generations will look at what we have done now as the founding stones for their success right and uh, it will be uh, a sin 
you know for the future generations if we don't put our uh, efforts in full and it's a lot of burden i mean it's 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 a lot to take in if you look at it that way as a responsibility but at the same time it is something that we are willingly happily going to do and then uh, it requires all the support that we can get from the mentors and uh, the the likes of fellow entrepreneurs that that's the togetherness that can only make it uh, success which i i think you can you can you know help us with that yeah well i mean you know i i i think i hope that i didn't make the same mistakes again in the next one but uh, i mean it's a new mistakes right so you learn from mistakes but yeah i mean i think you know if i kind of go back and maybe pick like two or three um so you know if i start with nimi i mean nimi was uh, or still is it's very much an ongoing business but we had a identity and access management solution that included a wearable device a wrist wearable with uh, fingerprint sensor and uh, bluetooth and uh, nfc interface with some on body sensors and some missing things and then back end software and i think you know that's one of the hard things is to kind of figure out what you are right so we were a hardware company and software company and back end software and you know really when it came to raising money when it came to um you know find uh, an mna it became very difficult um mm-hmm. i think in general hardware is not an easy thing to do it's not an easy company to build it's not an easy company to sell so if you're doing software Uh, and if you had hardware to that that you know somehow gets very confusing <laughs> so i don't know if there was a mistake that that's how i inherited the company but you know i i, I felt like i could have changed the direction it's very difficult to kind of sit back and say you know can i make like a significant change in the business and strategy and product direction and you can mm-hmm. just not an easy thing to do so that was lesson from nimi uh from uh, gainspan you know we were i mean when we started gainspan we called it wireless sensor networks right which was in 2005 and iot as a term wasn't invented and then mm-hmm. a year later people started calling it iot and you know we were focused on industrial and building automation we were building a, a wifi soc specifically for connecting sensors uh battery powered sensors to uh to the network and it was it was new i mean we were doing you know wifi was dominated by broadcom and qualcom and you know few other companies like mediatek and so we had no business being in wifi we were just taking wifi to a different direction uh but the market wasn't there and you know we it was i mean ti was a big competitor but it's not like they were making shit load of money in 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 uh, iot and so i think the right thing to do at that point even though it would have been difficult we had the capital to do so is to build the whole solution mm. and and increase the asp per unit right i mean we were selling chips chips many of these chips sell for nothing i mean i had when i joined amd decades back someone told me that the chip he's making costs less than a can of coke um and which is true i mean a lot of these chips are like you know they literally cost peanuts and it takes so much work to build them design them mm-hmm. uh but yeah so you know that would have been the lesson is going to know you know what what's going to work right a chip may not you can design the chip that may be a value but you may need to build the whole product So that was a lesson from that uh, result. I bootstrap result, put my own money in, almost lost my shirt and a few other things. And you know you have to be careful about that, right? I mean, if you say I'm going to put my own money in, uh, you may not get it back. I mean, this this mm-hmm. stuff is high risk investment. So I probably wouldn't have to do that again uh, for a chip startup. Okay, great. i think very very valuable lessons i'm sure a lot of people are uh, going to learn a lot uh, but thank you rohin thank you vijay for coming to the startup series and sharing the wealth of knowledge and experience uh, to the ecosystem and that that is growing importance every day now before you leave as a customary uh, 
and i know you have already covered a bit more but it is something that what would be your advice to our audience who are startups founder looking to leave their footprint on the ecosystem of semiconductors uh while you shared your mistakes and what you would not do but a bit of advice couple of tips that they can act on i think that would be our closing conversation and uh so you know something something you would want to share uh, as a closing uh, you know conclusion or some advice to all the fellow startups here or investors for that matter as well so <laughs> well, i'll i'll sound like a i'll i'll go first and rohin can wrap it up but yes i, I i'll sound like a broken record but i will repeat what i've said which is you know do something that's differentiated you know do something that you can say before you go too much into development is you have a product that has a differentiation of some sorts right? it doesn't always have to be ip doesn't have to be something completely different from what's in the market but you have to go to the customer and say i have a product that will do this for you that you can't get from anywhere else think about the customer problem right customers don't care what features your product has customers only mm-hmm. care about problems they need to solve yeah and as a chip company you have to predict what problems customers will have 2 3 years from now when you have a product so you have to be really smart and you have to adjust that right you have to keep learning about the market so don't don't be in isolation be connected with your uh, prospects and and keep learning from what they're doing so if you need to make adjustments to your product you do that and finally just like i said go to market is is in a very important part of building your your company not just the the technical side great thank you thank you vijay uh, rohin your closing comments um and i i know that you have few statistics to share if there are any missed i i think it it would be great time to share as well with us no no i think uh, i'll i'll talk about what is which could be a general advice for any startup not just semiconductor companies um i think if uh, i were to start a company to to make it super successful it's it's not what the core idea or the core market is it is it is looking into the future right and it is what a big mnc would have done to solve that future problem and it could be huge right and it might need like hundreds of millions of dollars to even start addressing that problem and as a startup with literally zero resources can you address that huge problem right mm-hmm. i mean if if you if you want to go after something that you are spending your life uh, life significant uh, capabilities and uh, faculties energies on then shoot for the moon right and that should be the goal you know whether we are able to achieve that or not is uh, is a is a different story but if we don't have that mindset of a major disruption what what is that big problem that this major semiconductor company is going to face you know 5 years from now 10 years from now and what is that as a small startup that i can do now that will make me supremely valuable because they are all in a certain direction they all have certain momentum that is difficult for them to change tracks on but as a startup you can think out of the box you can think what they cannot reach uh, to and i think as a startup that would set a great vision for the company and that would also fulfill what your market needs are going to be like which i pointed out which is of course the most crucial thing the product market fit is the right important one uh, metric for startup success so i think that would be uh, my single most advice and uh, no matter uh, what uh, you know the success or failure if if you attempt for something like that i think you will you will you will make make it to the history and um, Uh, so of course it cannot be done alone and uh, the, my previous point about you know working with all the entrepreneurs working with all your peers and mentors and uh, get as much support from these uh, so called competitors also uh, from their analysis from uh, their advice from their learnings and uh, teachings it's all uh, goes hand in hand to to make your success all the more meaningful yeah well, thanks thanks roin i know it's been late for you in singapore uh thank you for and vijay uh, very early morning for you <laughs> so thank you thank you both of you i know it's been a odd time 
uh, but thank you for doing I, this. Hey, I go I I even put on the dress shirt and the jacket for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for you know just uh, you know so early in the morning. I know. Uh, really, really appreciate all the effort, and I hope uh, that all these advice and conversation really goes. That uh, we also see more and more startups coming in in the India Semicon, and uh, Vijay, you have more startups to also help on. And, and I really hope that ecosystem really grows to the next level. So thank you, gentlemen. Uh, really, really appreciate and your commitment to to you know coming here and doing this for for all of us. Thank you, and I'll let you go. Uh, Rohin, let you sleep, and Vijay. Maybe catch a few more wings or have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Very much. Pleasure. Pleasure, Glovin. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you it was fantastic being part of this. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap of our discussion, folks. And uh, I know uh, it's been at some technical uh, glitches and there has been some problems. We are going to reach out to everybody and share the link again. And whether you are a startup uh, founder uh, driving a homegrown chip startup or investor tackling the you know, exploding space of Semicon, uh, you have, I hope you have discovered some valuable perspectives. Thank you, uh, everybody who have been here. And uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn and ring the bell to get notified on the next episodes. And of course, you can follow our newsletters where we talk about and share the insights of all these sessions. The next event is about uh, the building the IP culture, educating teams for innovation and uh, how to really drive the innovation within inside it's on 22nd of december and join us to ask your question it will be an audio event it will be more like a two-way conversation and uh, i hope uh, in the next new in the next uh, you know january in the J january uh, episode we are going to come up with a new new topic with a new uh, challenge in our hand and happy innovating uh, in advance wish you happy new year and catch you in the next episode thank you bye bye